wish some people would stop playing with the algorithm. But anyway, fam, hold on one second. Let me see if I can get this right. There we go. It was it was on mono, so I had to get it so you can hear it in both headphones. Please hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. If you want to donate, if you are able to donate in this very tough season of COVID and all that, donatebrown.com, patreon.com slash ycarnell, dollar sign breaking brown. Um, if you can do that for the cash app, but if not, hit that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell. Oh gosh, I would appreciate it. Now listen, some very interesting things going on in the world. We got to talk about the interesting things that are going on in the world. Now, you know, sometimes stuff just comes to you. Not all the time, but sometimes it do. And I swear to you, one of the things that I'm going to have to always say, no matter, I don't care when I'm in my rocking chair, I'm going to have to say, I was right. I was right. This looks like right. So let me just, let's just back up a second and hit that like button. If you're in here, just hit that like button for me. But one of the things that we have to talk about, you all remember the Friday show. I'm not going to get into it. There was a whole kind of discussion and then mea culpa about including certain groups in the ADOS kind of uh, um, plan for, I'm not going to say it just yet because the first two minutes count a lot. So you all know what it was. You saw the Friday video, the Friday pop-up, right? You all saw, you all really saw what it was. Now here's something that's very interesting. Let's talk about ice cream. We're going to talk about ice cream because you start to put stuff together and you wonder, why did that happen? Right? Like, what made this thing happen? How did you go from having one belief that ADOS, that reparations only go to ADOS, to having, to throwing out some kind of trial balloon that said, maybe it goes to other people. Let's try to flesh this thing out. So when you get that kind of thing, what you have to understand is that, listen, there are a lot of moving parts. When you see one moving part that is suspicious, you got to go find out what the other moving parts are. Because it's usually part of one mechanism. People don't usually operate alone. So I saw some things and I just want to share those things with you. About sweet ice cream. Some very, very strange things happen and I'm going to bring up in just one second. Sweet ice cream. Now, I want you all to, to kind of remember this fellow. As we go into the conversation, please remember this person. Do y'all remember Russell Contreras? Not only did he trash us in the AP, which an article that I will show you, they had to go back and add quotes and different things for because he didn't do his job. Because he works with Jam who's a propagandist, right? In the certain of spreading just a propaganda that she believes in and everybody who doesn't know any better. Well, that's just what it is. You got to be right, right on girl. It's a weird little thing she does, right? And we're going to deal with that in terms of the Harvard thing. But there's some other things going on here because she was his vehicle. I mean, he was her vehicle into a whole conversation. So let me just show you what he said. Let me just bring this up a little bit bigger for you. A group of US black scholars, activists, and writers has launched a new project to combat misleading information online, voting reparations, and immigration, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have been the most diligent in terms of being fact-based than anybody in this space. So this don't make no sense. And we had to deal with that. And so this is what I said to, 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 to um, a man who should have really like lost his job. That's how irresponsible that was. And that's how I understand now there's no such thing as, you know, we all know people are unbiased, but there's no such thing as, as unbiased journalism. This man is a propagandist, right? And he shouldn't be working in media. He should be working in opinion articles. But so let me go, let me, let me, in terms of like what you do, you can work in that, but you got to just write opinion pieces because that's what your work is. So he said, uh, I, I said during that time, he's not unbiased. He has an ax to grind with ADOS because he had been going back and forth with us. I don't know if you all remember that. He'd been fighting with us and being all kind of weird. Um, and I said, this is a vengeful pay, this is vengeful payback journalism 
over how ADOS has resisted his in attempt to create a level of sameness amongst people of color. Now, you got to keep this in mind when we talk about how this little plot unfolds. He's complicit in the smear. How unfortunate. That's what I said. Because what he has done, and I'm not going to get into that, but what he has done over time is to create this idea that we're all people of color. We all got lynched. We all got hung. We all got enslaved. There is no difference. There is no specialness. There is no lineage that is ADOS, right? Because that is the movement giving birth to the name that we call the lineage. Now, you can call it something else. The government can call it Native American, Native, I mean, Native Black American, whatever they want to call it. This is a movement anchored in a lineage and we've given it a certain name. So, Mexican Americans, Native Americans, and Asian Americans was, uh, uh, he says, was not used to, to terrorize black American people, just black American people in the U.S. Now, understand something. When you see something like this, you have to understand that what you're witnessing is revisionist history. And it's revisionist history in a way that seeks to erase ADOS. Because let me tell you what everybody understands. Everybody understands that we're the only game in town. Everybody understands who built America. I have no disrespect for any other group. But you did not build this country. But you need to present to the world the impression that you did. And how you do that is having people like Contreras play strategically in media to present that kind of ideal. Now, this is going to go somewhere pretty soon, so you got to stay with me. Strap onto your horse and hold tight because we're coming to something. So what did he do that for? He talked about how they were here before we got here. Well, that's not the point, sir. You're sort of, you're sort of a dull blade. That's not the point. Native Americans were here, right? That's not the point. You're sort of slow in your uptake. U.S. took Mexico in 1848. Not only were there native people living on those lands, but also people of Mexican ancestry. This, of course, uh, uh, was decades before 1965. I want y'all to stand on one square for me. Stand on one square for me. If you can't stand on any other square, stand on this square. I don't care. It's not about who got here first. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We've been here longer than most people, but it's not about, it's about who built this rich country. And there is no scholarship that you will ever read that will say anybody built this country but us. Our ancestors built it. Anything else that you read that says anything differently is lying to you. Is not being truthful and is not being honest. Don't make this about dates. And I don't even know why he used the 1800s, 1965. We've been here since 1619, so this is kind of a goofy thing to say. And there were some other tweets of his that I couldn't find because he deleted them. But pay close attention. Because yes, we were here 1619, but also we built, we built this country. You gotta, you gotta stand on that. That's the key. The key is not even like that he was stupid and wrong. The key is that, but we built the country. Other people fought the country. Other people left the country. And I understand that. And I have no disrespect for it. But what that means is that you didn't build the country. If you ran off or did whatever, you didn't build the thing that allowed us to be here sitting together, doing whatever, having ice cream. We're going to get to the ice cream in just a second. Because it's interesting. So he went through this whole thing, damaged his reputation in ways that like we'll deal with at a certain point. We don't have to deal with it now, but I just want to show you something else. Now, nearly, we know nearly all of the people lynched were ADOS. I mean, in terms of, we know that, right? The data shows that, but why do we have articles like this popping up? Lynch mobs kill Latinos across the West to fight to remember these atrocities. It's just starting. Let me tell you something, family. There is a movement afoot. There is a movement afoot to create BIPOC people of color and make them the same as ADOS, squash them up together, and dilute our justice claim. That movement is moving and it's moving fast. 
And I think that has something to do. I don't know. There's no way to ever know for sure, right? But I think that has something to do with what we saw last week in terms of, well, maybe pre-1950 black immigrants get in on a justice claim. Yes, because when you crack that door open, it's open for everybody. But everybody didn't build a country, even though a lot of people came to the country. Just because you came to the country, like Antonio said, doesn't mean you built it. You are living in a space that was built by bricks just because your people suffered. Doesn't mean you built anything. We're going to take it to the ice cream. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Because we're getting there. I just want to give a little context. For this all, we all the same stuff. About the, 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 the anti-black racism in the Latino community. Let's give some context while people are talking about sameness. Let's talk about it. We're going to lead up to it. Mr. Contreras. A new lawsuit describes a violent gang in L.A. Its members are deputy sheriffs. Well, what did they do? What they did? Let's see. You have to provide context for these sorts of things. And in 2018, the sheriff's department faced a lawsuit from the family of, of, of Donta Taylor, a 31-year-old black woman killed by deputies in a 2016 Compton shooting. Taylor's family argued that the deputies involved in the shooting were part of a violent clique. During a 2018 deposition, one of the deputies, Samuel uh, uh, Aldama, admitted that he shared a tattoo with other officers in the department. The department also said that he had ill feelings toward African Americans. The lawsuit was settled in June of this year with Taylor's family receiving $7 million. How? So you tell this we're all the same story, like the story of the rail, the the rail, the underground railroad to Mexico. But life, the lived experience of ADOS in this country tells something very different. You are not us, and we are not you. Now let me just say something. People say, "Oh, that's well, that's not nice to say that." Y'all special. Let me say something. This is not to say anything, whoever you are, if you're watching this, you got to understand one thing. Movements, other movements, other than me have to understand one. You all have to, if you're a movement and you're not ADOS or whatever, nobody is disparaging you. You have to build your own thing. Stop being so lazy and shiftless. That all you want to do is shoehorn your way into the ADOS movement. Let's see what black people is doing. This is, we the new black. We BIPOC. We all the same together. Let's get it together. We all the same, right? We're not the same. We are ADOS. That's what this movement defines us as. That's who we protect. That's who we're fighting for. You got to build your own stuff. What's happening, and that's why this Underground Railroad story is that, that Contreras is using. That's why he's using it. It's laziness. You don't want to build your own movement. You want to hit your own board to the movement that got the whole globe inspired to fight white supremacy. The whole globe got inspired by us. No, we happened before South Africa. We have before all that. You are inspired. We are the beacon light. You are not. But... You cannot continue to shoehorn into what we're doing. So let me just get into this underground railroad story just for a couple of seconds. Because it's true. Some, some, some black, some slaves went to Mexico. Yes. You would too. As she dug into oral family history, she heard an unexpected story. The two family, the family's ranches served as a stop on the underground railroad to Mexico, descendants said. Across Texas, parts of Louisiana, Alabama, and Arkansas, scholars, preservation scholars and preservation advocates are working to piece together the story of a largely forgotten American history, a network that helped thousands of black slaves um, escape to Mexico. Now, listen, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. 
Because we re remember the half has never been told. The half has never been told said only a, 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 a marginal, a small amount of slaves escaped to somewhere else that, that gained freedom. So understand what happens. These people take a marginal thing, an aberration, they blow it up and they say, this is what it is. They escaped to Mexico. Now understand, even if, you know, we know that some did that, but stop exaggerating the number, right? Secondly, stop saying that you are, or you were slaves because slaves escaped to Mexico. So what? That doesn't mean you are a part of our justice claim because slaves escaped to Mexico. They escaped to Canada too. Are they, or is Canada a part of our justice claim? Do Canadians get to run in here and say they're a part of our justice claim because ADOS, you know, or, or slaves during that time escaped there? You don't get to, you don't get to shoehorn. And that was because of our agency as slaves who said, I'm gonna figure a way to get out of this thing. Only a few did. But that was our agency. It wasn't you. I owe you nothing. Because what we see is a lot of those people, I'm going to go to that, are coming back now. They're coming back to America. Because you, Mexico, didn't provide like a good homeland and a good home life for them. You're racist yourself. Go and look up, go and Google how Mexicans treat um, uh, uh, Afro-Latinos or, or darker-skinned people there. It's hard for me to believe that you treated them real good. There are tribes we're going to get to that you, that you destroyed and trashed. You're a colonizer yourself, Mexico. How in the world are you, you saying because some slave, slaves escaped there that you are now entitled to our due? This is, this is wildly irresponsible. Wildly so. So let's go to something else really quickly. I'm not going to go through all of this. Hold on one second, fam. Because we're not gonna we're not gonna take too long. It's light work, that's all. When enslaved when in, when the enslaved went south, let's look a little bit up because they say some good stuff happened. Let's be honest. We were allowed to be free, partly because of other reasons. They needed people to come in and do certain things, but we can have that be a part of the book club at some time. But let's go look at some other stuff they said. <clears throat> Why did runaways head toward Mexico? For enslaved people in Texas or Louisiana, the northern states were hundreds of miles away, even if they did manage to cross the Mason-Dixon line. They were not legally free. In fact, fugitive slave laws, the fugitive slave laws of the U.S. Constitution and the laws meant to enforce it sought to return runaways to their owners. Mexico, in contrast granted their owners granted what does that say granted enslaved people legal protections that they did not enjoy in the northern united states that's true i'm not gonna lie that's absolutely true you should get to why it's true though but it's absolutely true let's go to our next quote mexico's congress abolished slavery in 1837 i've seen three dates on this so far doing my research but i'm not gonna harp on that why would i 20 years later, the country adopted a constitution that granted freedom to all enslaved people who set foot on Mexico soil, signaling that freedom was not some abstract ideal, but a general and inviolable principle, the law of the land. Two options awaited most runaways in Mexico. The first was to join Mexico's military colonies, a series of outposts, along the northern frontier, which defended against native peoples and foreign invaders. The second was to seek employment as servants, tailors, cooks, carpenters, bricklayers, day laborers, among other occupations. Their lives were by no means easy and slaveholders pointed to these difficulties to suggest that bondage in the United States was preferable to freedom in Mexico. Now they saying this is just something that, that the slave owners made up. Could be, could be not, because we know the Mexicans were the occupiers too. Noah Smithwick, a gunsmith in, in Texas, recalled that a slave named Moses had grown tired of living off husks in Mexico. 
and returned to his owner's lenient rule near Houston. Another came back uh, from his Mexican tour in 1852, according to the Clarksdale, Texas Northern Standard, with a supreme disgust for Mexicans. The conditions in Mexico were so bad, according to the newspaper, in the United States that runaways return to their homes of their own accord. Now, you know, they, they could be lying. We don't know what, not what they tell is hundred percent true. I'm just saying that there are two, there are two, this, there, there are two different views of all this. Like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about that. Now look at this number right here for me. By 1851, 356 black people lived at this military colony, more than four times the number who had arrived with the Seminoles the previous year. Now I want to tell you something. Understand that these are small numbers. Actually, the small number is the number of people who had, of, of slaves who had escaped and, and gained their way to freedom. That's an extremely small number. We give Harriet Tubman her due because she risked her life every time to do it. Mexico, you don't get no due for that. You didn't do nothing. You didn't risk your life. Yes, you can come. You can come here. You can be our servants. And we're not going to whip you necessarily like them, even though you're not really protected from it. But that's nothing. What does that mean? This is just an attempt to get us on board with this kind of people of colonists. Let me just read one more thing really quickly. Fugitive slaves also encountered labor practices that bore some of the hallmarks of chattel slavery. Ain't that something? In northern Mexico, hacienda owners enjoyed the right to physically punish their employees Meting out corporal discipline as harsh as, as, as many on plantations in the United States. In parts of southern Mexico, such as the Yucatan and Chiapas, debt peonage tied laborers to plantations as effectively as violence. In 1849, a Veracruz newspaper reported that indentured servants suffered a state of dependence worse than slavery. In 1857, El Monitor Republicano in Mexico City complained that laborers had earned their liberty in name only. To del Fierro, Matilda Hennis was not just a runaway as a servant, she was a member of the household as a servant. Oh, you that's not really freedom. Now they do say that El Fierno killed the white people that came to take her back. Right? You can go read it for yourself. I don't see how that counts. At least to me, and if I'm wrong, let me know as freedom. I, and if people leave slavery to go and serve you over here, they served you. We, don't, we owe you nothing. And you didn't build this country. There are no debts to you. Now, if you feel that you are owed something from America, I'm going to say this again until I can't stop saying it. You have to build your own movement. You can't say, well, you know what? Adolf's me too. This is not the Me Too movement. You can't say, well, you know what? Me too. I want some of that too. I'm entitled to. You are lazy. You have to build your own thing. You have to build your own movement. You have to talk about who your group is that was hurt or oppressed or disenfranchised by America. And you have to build your own movement. What we have allowed to happen in this country it's first of all, people give us these Mexican stories and, and tell us that Mexicans were freedom fighters. And we just like, oh, I didn't know. I ain't never know none of that history. I sure do appreciate you for telling me what the Mexicans did for me. Not understanding really the, the, the true hero in this is the slave who, who ran away. Whether it be to the north, 
whether it be to Canada, whether it be to Mexico. That's the hero. Mexico ain't the hero. They had a lot of reasons. You can read up on it why they decided to, 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 to not have slavery. It wasn't to save the Negro. You wasn't no hero, Mexico. You've never been a hero. And then now them people are trying to come back here. Why? Because uh, that's not a heroic place to be, apparently. You see it right here. Hold on. Do -do 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 -do. What does it say? Their ancestors fled the U.S. fled U.S. slavery from Mexico. Now they're looking north again. Of course you are. You're not living no good life over there. Why would if, if you if, if it was such a good life that you walked into, why would you want to walk back over here? We know what it is. Nobody's slow. We have we absolutely understand. Now this brings me to this. So Contreras, that reporter person, right? Here he is again. Misinformation don't go nowhere. We have to learn how to deal with propaganda. I don't care whether that's writing axios, whether that's writing. You don't need me to do that. We go, we're building our own media team. But whether you can, this is something you can do to you, for yourself as a call to action. I don't care whether it's writing Axios. I don't care whether it's writing the Associated Press. Everybody has a letter to the editor. This kind of stuff is stupid. First look, ACLU to push reparations bill. And I thought about this because I saw this the day before. Right? I saw this. I saw and Cobra was up at 3 a.m. Whoever manages their little account. And I'm sure they get I'm sure they unpaid, y'all. They just say stupid stuff. They was up off that on that yak or something. I don't know. Um, here is a metric. Uh hold on a second. Because that's how I got to here. That's how I got here. Here is a metric. More Congress members put value on Ben and Jerry's. On what Ben and Jerry says. Than what ADOS has campaign. And I said, that's really weird. Why are they harping on this? They too stupid to understand what this means? It's time to talk about reparations. Now, here's the thing is, that's how you know these people is stupid. Some, you can't, listen, you can follow a lot of people in your life. But don't ever follow anybody who's intellectually, intellectually deficient. Because if they were on top of things, they would know, hence the ice cream, they would know that what you're revealing to yourself isn't that you have built a movement. You are revealing that you are in the pockets of a, of a white corporation that makes ice cream. Well, well, Ben and Jerry's, they pay attention to us and that's better than ADOS. ADOS ain't got no kind of ice cream company to pay attention to them. Y'all don't got whipped cream and fudge and nothing what you have just said that the reason ben and jerry's pays attention to you in cobra is because they know that you are not in favor of an honest reparations movement they know that all you want is money the same thing you've wanted with hr 40 you've wanted your own particular slush fund they know that i know that everybody knows that you're a joke but you can take advantage of people who are jokes and use them to push stuff that is not good for their people and that's why you started this whole group in the 80s and you and you didn't get any traction until ados that's why because you're incompetent and inefficient and you're bought out and sold out. But what we have to do is reach out to all these different Axios, the AP, and write nice little letters about what Encopa really is, about what Axios really is, the screenshots that are still available of what Contreras really is, how he's anti-ADOS, anti-black. Let's write about it and put that all out there. We have to have a list of reporters that we know are opposed to us and we have to be opposed to them. Just like we're opposed to Encobra because Encobra is opposed to, opposed to reparations. You know how I know? Because, listen, somebody said something stupid to me. That was a little stupid child on the internet. They wong something or the other. And he said, well, 
I hate people. I don't hate. I dislike people who just use reparations as like some kind of theoretical thing and they don't live black life and they don't they don't they don't feel it as some kind of imperative they're jokes so he said well you know the courts have already said that the, because it didn't happen recently or whatever you it's not a specific time you don't have any standing wait a minute hold on hold on first of all i can draw a line to to what happened to ados all the way from slavery all the way through accrued disadvantage i can draw a line Second of all, it's not our fault that it didn't happen then. It was supposed to happen at the time with Fort Eggers and the Mule, but it didn't happen. Third of all, the courts always reverse themselves. I don't have to wait on the courts, the American courts, to reverse themselves. They do it all the time. They've done it with, with civil rights. They've done it with marriage equality. They've done it with immigration. I don't have to say, but the courts ruled this way one time a long time ago, so you can't do it. It ain't going to work. Just say you hate us, man. Let's just, just say that. Because the likelihood of the court saying, you know what? We don't really like ADOS reparations, but we want to give it to all black people around the globe. We want to we wanna do this flat blackness thing. What's the chances of that? People just act slow and slard for no reason. Other than the fact that you don't like, you don't like ADOS. I don't care what you want. You can say you don't like native blacks. Some people secretly hate us. And that's fine. I don't need you to like me. I don't like you either. You look you look strange. I don't care. But it happens, right? And there's a whole ice cream plot, apparently, with the Ben and Jerry's things. We was all slaves together. Wasn't we? That's what Contreras said. There was other slaves. How can you say we was not slaves with you? I'm sorry, what? So let's go on to a few things, a few other things. So this was the article that came out that kind of got my antennas up because I know this person is a, that he's a dishonest charlatan. So when I saw this, I said, oh, is that the same Contreras who was lying and, and talking about us and, and had, and had us calling the AP to talk about how much he lied on us and said stuff that wasn't true. Yes, that's him. Why are you writing an article? as if you are unbiased when you don't like us why doesn't make any sense for you to do that but let's go to something that he said let's go to some the details right everybody oh let me go did i go to the title of it when i was on the other one let me see this is ACLU, but you know, they like the Ben and Jerry's thing. They connected to them. And it's all this, it's all this, it's ACLU, it's Ben and Jerry's. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of money being thrown around. So let me go to this. The group's systemic equality agenda includes a demand to pass legislation sponsored by Sheila Jackson Lee that would fund a commission to study proposals on reparations for African-Americans. Let me just stop right there for one second. That's an Encobra bill. We did more than Encobra has ever done to get co-sponsors on that bill. Somebody put this up. I appreciate it. But we couldn't get that to be our bill. You know, um, like I said last time, Dr. Sandy Darity, I spoke to him. I said, hey, we have to figure out a you know, this should be our bill. He said, don't worry about it. I got to connect and see the Jackson Lee's office that never came to pass. Never came to pass. So this is an Encobra bill. Still, we put a bunch of co-sponsors on an Encobra bill. Now, I would have worked on this and pushed for something different had not Dr. Sandy Darity told me, don't say anything. Mr. Black Respectability, don't do anything. Don't you do anything. I'm going, I have a connect in that office. Don't say nothing. And I didn't say nothing. I said, okay, you got it. Years later, we have nothing. We don't have any edits. We don't have any, we don't have anybody in her office. We have nothing. Years later, this is political incompetence. This is what I mean. You should have stayed over there and played your economic lane because now we're here fighting with Encopra. Not only nationally, we're fighting with them locally because they're pushing local slush funds on people. And everybody like to pass a little slush fund, pass you a little money. That's all they want to do is get a little money. 
they're benefiting more from our reparations movement than we are. Because I listened to somebody who said, don't worry, I got it under control. You are politically incompetent. And you should spend less time talking to BTP and Otis and more time just on your work and let us do this work because this is what we got here. We put a bunch of people on in Cobra's bill and you said with your relationships, you would make this not in Cobra's bill no more and it's still in Cobra's bill. Go somewhere and sit down and do some research. I'm sick of this. And I'm sick of people telling me, oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. No, 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 no. No, you in line with Ben and Jerry's now, whatever. Then go your own way. If Ben and Jerry's got money for you and that's what you want to do, then just go your own way. We don't need you. We don't need this. This is a headache. We did all of this and Cobra did nothing. They are nothing. And they don't care. If they cared, they wouldn't be going around trying to take Ben and Jerry's money. Let me show you. Let me go to the top again and start from the top. Gosh, the group systemic equality agenda. Uh, and this is ACLU and they, in Cobra got Ben and Jerry's. I just showed you that um, includes a demand to pass legislation HR 40. Okay. It's an in Cobra. It's never going to, and, and it would never pass. It's, it's, it's an awful bill. We've talked about that here. The group also wants post offices in rural black native American and Latino areas with no banks to offer check cash. And that's fine, but that's a class based initiative. You're helping poor people to offer check cash and money transfers and, and bill payment services. Let's go to the let's go to the next one. Flashback. This is Mr. Contreras writing this, right? The person who just despises us. Understand that's him writing all of this. The ACLU represented biracial couple. Richard uh, Mildred Loving in the 1967 landmark uh, Supreme Court case Loving versus Virginia that ruled state bans on interracial marriage were unconstitutional. I guess we're supposed to feel some kind of way. ACLU uh, founders include black poet and civil rights advocate James Weldon Johnson. I still guess we're supposed to feel some kind of way. Between the lines, the ACLU's agenda comes as reparations, as the reparations movement gains mainstream attention. Thanks to, wait for it, this is Mr. Contreras, New York Times 1619 Magazine Project and the writer Ta-Nehisi Coates. Now understand, Coates' article came out in 2014 or 15. It's 2021, dude. You can't grant him credit for that. How long, is Coates still in France? Did he leave back after the, after the, the thing? The National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America co-chair Cam Howard, Mr. Cowboy Boot, I add that myself, said it was exciting that the ACLU is officially joining the fight in reparations. A fight y'all never joined. Like the ACLU joining a fight in reparations one y'all never decided to take up arms for. Though in recent years, ACLU members have been offering technical support. Oh. Don't forget. Don't forget the ACLU sued the Trump administration 413 times over policies from the Muslim ban to the border wall. Archer said the ACLU also will sue the Biden administration to pursue its racial equity agenda if needed. What? This is some weird stuff. This is all very odd. Listen, suing for... I, I don't know how you know I think we have to you know we have to mobilize we have been mobilizing now we have to organize but I think in terms of individual call to actions you have to start writing these people emailing these people and letting them know that Encobra is not a real reparations movement and that it doesn't have the support of the people and it never had and it never will. It is a failed organization that only shows up and only at the behest of people who want to create certain kinds of slush funds. And they are willing to do it 
if they get paid at a certain salary, and I think certain people that we have been aligned with, I will say no names, but trial balloon comes into mind, have decided that, listen, the only way that we're going to, that I'm going to get in that room with the ACLU and with, and, and, and with the, the ice cream people is if I open that door too. And let me tell you, listen, we have a door that you can open in terms of the black agenda. That's the thing that helps black immigrants and black non ADOS, uh, uh, people who are American. That's the thing that helps protect you against racism. But our justice claim, as I said, is sacred. You don't get to give that away by what right? You got 12 knuckleheads at Encobra that are trying to give that away. And we have to do everything that we ha we can do to let every publication, every organization know that they do not have support on the ground from regular black people. From, and when we talk about that, we're talking about ADOS in terms of reparations. You do not have the support of anybody. You have a P.O. box and something that some big money person paid for. You have no on the ground support or organization and we have to let everybody know that whenever we can. And we have to keep in mind, keep a list. We'll get deeper into this when HQ launches, but keep a list of these reporters who are anti-ADOS. Follow them. See what they're up to. Write their editors, write, their, write the publishers. Write the other people that they contract with and write for. Be very specific in how you write. That is the call to action. Because these people cannot continue to get in the way of what our do is. Our do is not your do, Mr. Contreras. People would just be out here being lies and thieves. It's not your do. Because look at this. Mexican-Americans fought on both sides of the Civil War. You know who fought on both sides of the Civil War as well? White people. Y'all was white people. To, to have the ability to choose what side you fight for. We was just ADOS. We was lucky to even fight for the Union. ADOS men were, right? It, to have the choice to choose who's what side you fight for, you're just white. Don't come in and claim to be ADOS when you're white. You're white. You was white then. You had to choose. Well, what am I going to do? Pros and cons. White people. Don't come here now and say, but, 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 but we was lynched. Nah, I don't think so. Read this really quickly. At the same time, there were wealthy Mexican Americans who owned slaves and those whose income depended on the slave trade. You also had well-to-do individuals like Colonel Santos Benavides, Benavides here in Laredo who actually became the highest ranking Tejano officer in the Confederate Army, says uh, Thompson. There are instances of him acting as a slave catcher where he's actually going into Mexico and retrieving. Ain't this some stuff? and retrieving these runaway slaves and returning them to their masters for which he was compensated. Listen, your people, not my people. It just is what it is. It just is what it is. And also, Mexico, you need to handle your own business. Listen, Mr. Contreras, go tell Mexico to handle their business with the people that they oppressed. Everybody got their own slaves, and it's not you, Contreras. It's not none of y'all who write for the AP. Y'all don't help the slaves. Y'all don't help the people who really suffered. You're, you're occupiers who come here and pretend to be friends, and you think we're so stupid we don't know it. We do. Mexico City. The Mexican government on Friday set up a justice commission to the Yaqui people looking to solve the land, water, and infrastructure problems of what President Andres Manuel Lopez Abrador, that's a long, he's long, calls Mexico's most persecuted indigenous group. The Yaquis were attacked and temporarily evicted uh, from their homeland in northern Mexico, Sonora, state over a hundred years ago all the original inhabitants suffered robbery but no people suffered as much as the yaqui 
Lopez Obrador, Lopez Obrador said Thursday in a meeting with indigenous leaders here to steal their land and, and they killed more than 15,000 yaki. Y'all got y'all got y'all got your own business to handle. Stay out of mind talking about trying to act like you Adolf and that you built America. Just go somewhere and find a nice seat for yourself. One of the last chapters was a 1902 massacre by Mexican soldiers of about 150 Yaqui men, women, and children. They were among they were among about 300 Yaqui men, women, and children who escaped from forced exile and started started walking back to their lands in Sonora. There were they were attacked by 600 soldiers in the mountains near the Sonora capital. Hermosillo, Lopez Abrador, also championed indigenous culture and traditions. Listen, y'all got you, you all have done your Mexico. If you don't go, leave me leave me alone and handle your business. And we're gonna get ready to get out of here with this. Lynchings were meant to terrorize Black Americans. Stop telling me. Well, we we stop telling me this stuff. Well, we 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 was all lynched the same. No, that was us. Don't lie to me. You can lie to other people. The other slavery. Did them slaves build America? Them little, the, 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 the aberration? No, they didn't. So, like, don't bother me. Don't bother me with the BS. We know what you did and we know what you didn't do. But I say all that to say, we have to have a come to Jesus meeting, family. We have to understand that these people are actively trying to rewrite history. To shoehorn their way into our justice claim and our job is to fight against that our job is to mobilize against that our job is to organize against that our job is to know who the know who these reporters are who are actively anti us and be in that all the time and he's one of them there are many but he's one there are many i ain't gonna lie about it the chattel slaves brought from Africa who became Ados built the country. You didn't. I know it's a shame that you, you, so you don't want to build your own movement. I know you're lazy, so you don't want to build your own movement. I know you, you don't really have enough, so you don't want to build your own movement. But the thing you got to do is build your own movement because there's no space for you here. Now, we're not unsupportive of you building your own movement. You can do that. And I say, go ahead. But you ain't building nothing yet. You're just talking and you're just using your position at the AP to become part of something you did not build and you did not suffer. You are a liar and you are a thief. And we have to be able to quickly see a liar and a thief. See it for what it is. You can't ride on our backs. We're not going to be nobody else's mule. America done broke our back. We can't hold you no more. So you're going to fall off. And what that means is that you have to walk yourself or you have to find another mule. I prefer that you build your leg muscle and walk off. We can't do this no more. We can't do Incorpor no more either. The organization is a dead organization. White capital breathes life into it. Listen, when you write something like this, let's just go back to this for one second. When you take pride, when you take pride, let me bring it up. And Cobra took pride in like Ben and Jerry's supporting them. When you take pride in like your paymasters, you didn't take pride in anything you did yourself. See, this is all Contreras doing the ACLU article that's hooked up with Ben and Jerry's. That's all the thing. When you take pride in being bought off, you didn't take pride and say we had a movement and we built a movement and, and we're coming or whatever to Capitol Hill or whatever. You said, hey, ADOS, y'all built the movement, but guess what? Ben and Jerry's is following us. And and Ben and Jerry's is, yeah, because you're easy. You light work. It's easy to pay you off. That's why they come to you. Because you're going to include everybody. You're going to sell us out. Sellouts always get the money first. That don't mean ADOS won't ever get any money. Right? But we'll be the last to get money because we have standards. 
You're not going to sell. We're not selling out to nobody. Because they got good ice cream. We're not going to sell out to nobody. Because like we don't, we don't work or nothing. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. You will do that though. That's why Ben and Jerry's pays attention to you. They know who you are. They know you better than you know yourself. Hmm? Members of Congress put value on what Ben and Jerry says. To the AOS hashtag campaign. Nah, members of Congress put 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 more steam into what what corporations say because corporations have money to pay them. Corporations can make donations, contrib uh, campaign contributions. They don't care about you. And this is, as I end, this goes back to what we always say. You have to have the wind at your back. And the wind at your back is actual people who are organized in a way to support you. Having Ben and Jerry's at your back is nothing in terms of getting reparations for ADOS. Now, if you want to just sell out ADOS, it's wonderful, but it's nothing. And you have built nothing in your life. You will die having no meaningful contribution to the reparations movement. And that is a sad state of affairs, but you deserve all of it. Because you sold the whole movement out for the ice cream people. And you brag about white capital as if it's something that you did. And so... I think that we have to get efficient at pushing back at editors, at writers, um, at newspapers who do this thing. And we have to be thoughtful and ferocious in how we do it. We have all the data. We can methodically write this stuff out and tell these people exactly why they're wrong and exactly why this is erasure. And what erasure means to us. So I'm going to leave it there, fam. I'm going to um, set up the calls. I will come back. We will take those calls and we will, as usual, have the conversation. Don't forget, if you are in here right now to hit that like button, I'll be right back. And we're going to just, just talk it out, okay?
am. I'm not going to try to keep y'all long tonight. Um, I'm not going to try to keep everybody for no long, long time. You know, we're going to get in and get through it. Hopefully. Um, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So let's go to... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me make sure one thing before we go to our first call. Let me go to 765. 765, what's your name? Where you calling from? And tell me what your thoughts are about all this. What's going on, your bet? This is your man calling from Dallas. What's How going on, doing? fam? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, uh, that's true. I think y'all been going through it. Oh, you know it. You know <laughs> how it is. <laughs> I think I, I heard that. The first thing I, I saw that shit, I said, oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> I've, been, I've been in a little Twitter battle myself over here as of, as of right now. You've been in a little Twitter yeah, battle. You've you been in a little Twitter battle. <laughs> Yeah, but you got a lot of people being willfully ignorant about what, like, who deserves reparations in this country and who does not. Mm. You know, you got a lot of people out here being willfully ignorant about what, what, you know what I mean, what the black agenda versus reparations actually mm. is. Willfully ignorant, you say? Willfully ignorant. And then you got, I mean, there's people over here talking about, well, what happened in the Panama Canal and, and the, you know, and we went there and the Caribbean needs to do this and, and we did that. I'm like, that, that's not the same thing. It's yeah. Not the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, but so I knew, I but let me say this, let me say this, fam, before you get started. I knew that was going to happen. See, everybody's like, oh, I don't know why Yvette got so upset about it. Because I knew this was going to happen. Like, the thing is, like, this is the thing that's going to happen once you open that door. Like, once you open that door, once you crack that door open, you open the door for that whole debate to come in, right? And once you open the door for that whole debate to come in, that's just what it is. You're right. And, and like, uh, somebody was asking, it was like, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't remember exactly what you and Antonio Moore said about uh, immigrants that came here pre-1950, right? I, mm -hmm. I can't remember. If you can expound on that real quick before I make my point. Well, I said, I said, we, well, we have to figure out something to do, right? If people suffer discrimination, even today, we have to figure out, not just pre-1950, you have to, if you're doing a movement, how can we be inclusive? And so we figured out that the way to do that was through the black agenda, right? So you have a lived experience of racism and discrimination, right? If you came here as an immigrant, but as a black immigrant, or if your people came, but you have a reparations agenda of plunder if you came here as ADOS. So the thing is, what you have to do is say, well, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a black agenda where we have protections for people who are not ADOS, but they have no right to our justice claim. That was the answer. That's the answer that we came up with in terms of what do you do with people who are pre-1950s? Well, you have a black agenda that protects them so they're not discriminated against in their day to day, but they still don't get to have hands on our um our justice claim so the, the the black agenda was our answer to what do you do what do you do with what, what do you do with black immigrants and non-ados black americans that was our answer and it took us a long time to come okay. to that that was like 2018 okay so it's like okay. we already okay. solved the problem go ahead. go ahead i said so it's like we already solved the problem you know what it's like when you already solved the problem? Like, we already solved the problem of what, what happens with black immigrants. We fixed that. We figured it out. The black agenda, that's how that's how we, that's, that's for them. And us, but that helps them too. We figured that part out. Why are we going back through now, though? We already figured that out. And, and, and actually, to kind of strengthen that, like, the, the debate I had with someone, he was like, um... He basically asked the question was like, okay, um, what was it? He was like, one of the one of one of the things that made that made people believe that ADOS was uh were anti immigrant or whatever was the, the affirmative action portion on ADOS ADOS one oh one dot com. And I had to explain to him like that was supposed to be a set aside for ADOS. Yeah. It was supposed to be for us. So of it course got you have to come in and tell them You've got to rewrite that to make sure it goes to us. Yeah, it got co-opted. Like, 
Yeah, it wasn't even supposed to be for right. women. There was a whole thing where, where women got included. And because it said specifically sex, whatever, but it was supposed to be. There's a reason why LBJ used the language that he used. Like, you can't be handicapped this long and still make it. There's a reason why he used that because he was talking. There's a reason why he announced that at Howard University. He was talking specifically to us. And so that's supposed to be for us. I, 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 I just don't understand this idea that, well, you know, um, you know, I'm going to remake that in a way that's for somebody else and not call it stealing, no. And, and another thing that he said, another thing this guy said, it, as a matter of fact, it was on y'all block alert. It's the dude, that I, the dude I was debating with was the block alert for the day. Um, another thing that he said was, um, what did he say? What did he say? He said, because I, I asked him a specific question, I said, what was the motivation for any immigrant to come to America knowing that this country was a racist country that enslaved and oppressed people that looked like them? And this dude straight up told me, well, maybe it wasn't in a brochure that, that this type of stuff was going on. Y'all better stop playing with trolls. Everybody around the world knew what was going. On. Everybody around the world knew. Everybody around the world knew what was going on in America. You came to America because even though it was racist, it was better than where you came from, and that was your reparations. The fact that you got to come here, and even though it was bad, you got to come here and and benefit from the freedom struggle of ADOS was your reparations. You don't get reparations now. You don't get to be discriminated against. That's why there's a black agenda so that we can include you in that too. But. You were not a victim of the plunder of slavery and everything that, and the accrued disadvantage. That was not you. See, this is some this some BS. And y'all better leave these trolls alone. These trolls, some of these trolls is paid trolls and 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 all of that stuff. You better leave these people alone. They got problems. I, I feel like <laughs> the reason why I gotta address the trolls from time to time is because other people come in and read this stuff, and they I gotta see. be shut down because. Other people come in and they read and they see stuff being said like that. And they be like, well, you know what? He got a point. No, he doesn't. That yeah, yeah, you're right. He don't, he don't got I'm a point. About dumb as a, bo so about dumb as a bag of rocks. I think I saw him. I think I saw who you're talking about. I ain't going to say him, but he about dumb as a bo bag of rocks. Well, what if? But see, we shouldn't <laughs> even we shouldn't even open this conversation back up. See, people don't even understand when we talk about Darity and like, well, he made a mistake. You open this whole conversation back up to be relitigated. We have put this to rest. Like most of the, the non-ADOS black Americans and black immigrants have put this whole thing to rest. Well, like the ones I've been talking to, well, you're right. Y'all get that. Um, figure out, I just want to be included. I want to be protected because we suffer racism too. I got you. He opened that whole thing back up with, without any kind of consultation with anybody. I could have told you that was a stupid thing to do. But you weren't concerned about that. You were concerned about Ben and Jerry's and the ACLU and you want to be included. You don't want to be ostracized. You don't have the heart for what it takes to be ostracized in the world. So that's what happened. That's a mistake. Just like saying I got to connect in Sheila Jackson Lee's office was a mistake. Because you didn't have one, obviously. And you're right because like I'm hearing things like, oh, well, what if, what if, what if, my, ancestors, what if my ancestors came here in 1910? And I'm like, if your ancestors got here in 1910, Nine times out of ten, unless they purposely desegregated themselves from Ados, they Ados now. Yeah, you have you by now. You have to have had some Ados. They done married into Ados by now. If you can't hear, you done married into Ados by now. You done married, and so that begs the question, though, friend. That begs the question. If you know that most of the people during that time have have ninety nine out of a hundred have married into Ados, what are you really doing? What are you really doing? Um, grasping at straws? No, like, you ain't grasping at straws. Like, like, you're opening like, a door that like, you, like, you're opening yeah. Pandora's box, fam. You're opening Pandora's box to all immigrants to have access to this justice claim. You're not grasping at straws. You are the person who who put this 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 trial balloon out there is actually opening the door. They know that this isn't about the group that isn't even relevant. You're opening the door to all groups to have access to this justice claim so that you can have access to the whole reparations apparatus that has excluded you because you are tied to ADOS. You ain't fooling me. You might fool some people, but you ain't fooling me. You're absolutely right on that one. You are absolutely right. And um, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I noticed something that was real weird when I was having this debate with this guy. 
is that, and I had to tell my friend, I'm like, it looks like Sandy Dirty because I, I guess I'm assuming that Sandy Dirty either follows me or I follow him or whatever. He's playing both sides of the argument. Yeah. Like, how do you retweet something that I said and then retweet something that this man said as well? He does it all the time. It don't make any sense. He does that all the time. He plays both sides. And the thing is, it's easy to play both sides if nobody calls you on playing both sides. Like, you can play both sides all day if nobody ever says, hey, homeboy, you playing both sides. And then when I say, hey, you playing both sides, what event? You just be so divisive all the time. I don't know why you act like that. You just be acting crazy. No, I see what I see. And you playing both sides. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go with this one. You can't. You, there ain't no fence straddle in here. You cannot fence straddle this. It's either it's either you in or you out. I, so I'm gonna leave you with that. Thank I'm you, go fam. Ahead and let somebody else get in. Appreciate it, fam. Thank you. You right on it. You right on it, though, fam. I appreciate you. Yeah, you can't no fence straddling. Like that's that's not how movement movements work. You can't be like, well, I kind of want to be with Dr. King, but I kind of like these other people who's over here. This, what your name is, Governor? 215, 215, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, Vet. Uh, hey. John P. from Philly. How you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, this might be a little off topic, but you did talk about the monies and um, the campaign funds and stuff. So I sent, I sent a couple of emails about the C4 status, and I did, didn't get a reply. So I wanted to know how that worked and how it how it trickled down to the the chapters how how what works we don't have any money yet yeah the, the c4 status like like i, I know uh, um ados is hq is c4 but how does that work with the with the the um the, the different chapters would, would we mean? be c4 status as well well all the chapters kind it's kind of like it's kind of like naacp is a thing Right, whatever his status is, right. and all the chapters fall under that, right? So there's no individual chapters with a C3 or C4, right? Everybody falls under the umbrella of whatever your whatever you decide your organization to be, C3, C4, whatever. So that's kind of how it works. Right. Everybody's under the umbrella of that. Okay. All right. That's, that's all I had. Okay. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. Thank you for calling Thank in. Um, I, uh oh, what, what I do? What I did? Oh. I did something there. Okay, I'm going to seven one three. Seven one three, what's your what's your name? Where you calling from? And what you think about all this Ben and Jerry's ACLU stuff? Hold on one second. What is this? My phone is acting up to date. Here we go. Hold on. There we go. Hello. Hey fam, what's going on? I'm doing fine, Miss Yvette. How are you? I'm pretty good. I can't complain. Look, even if we did, nobody would listen. Show sure wouldn't. Sure wouldn't. life in America. Show sure wouldn't. Wouldn't care what for, <laughs> for nothing. Wouldn't care what for nothing. Not at all. I'm so glad that I got. Well, I, I wanted to follow up to the first caller, but anyway, being the second caller after him, I guess that's fine. Um, I'm kind of nervous. I've called into your show before, but okay. I um think that the story I'm going to tell you is relatively. Um, how do you say it? It goes well with tonight's topic. Okay. So my mother's family is ADOS. Um, they're from Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, descendant of slavery. Um, like you always say, descended from slave owners and slave masters mm. and a little bit of Native American in there, right? Okay. My father's family, my dad, he's deceased, but he was a black man. But his family was from, well, my dad grew up in New York, as did his parents, but they were West Indian, okay? okay. Now, following Miss Yvette, I am. My great grandparents on my father's side, they were originally Jamaican, right? But then when the Panama Canal was being built um, at the turn of the 20th century, they left Jamaica, went there during the construction of the canal. And so my all of my great grandparents were born in Panama and they lived there until the 19, late 1920s, mm. probably like early 30s. Mm. Now, I'm going to stick with my dad's side for a minute, okay? Okay. So, they lived there of late 1920s, early 30s. And then because my great-great-grandfather had worked as a Jamaican laborer on the construction of the canal, he was technically employed, I believe, by the U.S. government. So, they were able to get U.S. citizenship 
because the thinking was was that okay these west indian laborers we can either send them back to their own countries but that wasn't going to prove effective because it would have cost too much money to repatriate them or we can let them stay here and they can just assimilate with the spanish i'm going to use an older term the spanish negroes in in panama at that time because panama had just been had just become an independent country from colombia some of them did stay there and the descendants of those people are known in spanish as los antillanos right mm, okay. well my family some stayed some came to the u.s obviously my great grandparents came to the u.s so they got to new york in the 1920s um and they became citizens in the late 30s it was just before the second world war my grandmother was born in new york city now her mother and father both spoke spanish they were west indian but they came here through a spanish-speaking country okay my grandmother's father got to new york in 39 he didn't come through panama he actually came here from cuba he was jamaican but in the caribbean a lot of people island hopped at that time so he oh. was working in santiago de cuba which is in the eastern side of cuba got on a ship left in 1939 from santiago went to honduras and then from honduras to new york okay he lived in new york my great-grandmother lived in new york and all their children were born in new york that was this is the early 40s keep that in mind mm -hmm. my great-grandmother grew up in new york they lived in i guess what you could today call the south bronx like the mott the mott haven area and my grandmother told me she can remember a time in new york when on the grand concourse in the bronx this is the way she described it. There were nothing but Jews who stayed along that street. But then the streets that fed onto the Grand Concourse in that area were blacks, but they were like blacks from the Caribbean. So like, mm. you know, West Indians, I guess yeah. Panamanians, Jamaicans. There were some Puerto Ricans. And, you know, I mean, some of them were like mulattoes. So they, you know, would have been passed for Negroes or whatever. My grandmother can remember growing up in New York in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s. Okay. And sometimes people refer to them as Spanish Negroes. Oh. My grandmother, my dad's father, um, they divorced when my dad was a little kid. So my grandma ended up remarrying um, a man who was an ADOS man. He's still okay. living, 90 years old, okay. um, from Georgia. Okay. She always says, they always kind of go back and forth with each other because he would say like, well, you know, the racism up north was nothing compared to down south. And then she says, well, no. The racism down the racism up north was there because even though there were no signs in new york there were still places that we as blacks couldn't go mm -hmm. st jerome church is in the south bronx when my grandmother lived in that neighborhood although a lot of the west indian and caribbean people who lived in that part of the bronx many of them were catholic they couldn't go to st jerome church there mm -hmm. were no signs but they couldn't go there because they were negroes mm -hmm. right so i'm saying all of this to say my grandmother grew up she knew that her family was not from this country but at that time there were so few black immigrants this was before the 1960s she by and large lived her life as an american negro she says you know if you talk to her about race she says we were negroes then that's what we were called that's, that's the terminology she uses and then you know when she ended up going to college in the 60s she studied nursing but she also studied um as her minor it was like african-american studies because she was interested in, you know, the Afro-American, I guess, history and culture. Because, you know, the 60s, that's what was going on at that time and all of that. So, that's the story with them. That's my mom's family. I'm sorry, my dad's family. I grew up in Texas. I speak Spanish, right? I um, don't want to be disparaging of the guy who you were referring to, the Contreras man. But it's disrespectful when people try to siphon their way into the claims of ADOS. Mm. Because on my mother's side of my family, and here we go again, on my mother's side of my family, they grew up in Texas. They lived in Texas. And Texas has always had a large Hispanic population. In the eastern part of the state, it was more southern. The West, West Texas is more western in culture and how it looks and all of that. In East Texas, by and large, Mexicans historically, I'm not saying they didn't face prejudice, but they were white. Mm. They could do everything white people could do. They went to schools with white people. They went to churches with white people. They intermarried with white people. They were legally white, even the ones who were brown. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't face prejudice, but they were not Negroes. That's still true. And today. that's important to know. 
I my grandmother is seventy nine years old, and when I asked her when I was a, when I was growing up, I said, "So they did that to the blacks. What about the Hispanics?" She said they were white. I said, "So wait a minute, like they?" She said they could do everything white folks could do. My grandmother didn't. My grandmother, even though some of them didn't look like, I guess white people. My grandmother said they always saw Hispanics in their area, who mostly at that time were Mexican, Mexican Americans, I guess you could say. They always saw them as white because they could do everything that white people could do. Now, where she lived, they did have a Spanish-speaking school, but that was only for the, the students who spoke Spanish. It wasn't. They didn't have to go there. You know, they. They, it, it, it was a choice. That they it go, was a choice. They go to the school for the white kids. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said you, it was a choice. It was a choice. It was a choice. And like I say, it's not taking anything from anybody. It's not no. saying that, you know, they didn't face prejudice because they did. They did. But they did not go through what the Negroes in that area went through. And I think that my family's story, I'm so glad I got to call in and say that because that just kind of validates what you've been saying. That, yes, we all have faced some type of suffering. But African-Americans, American, what is it, ADOS, yep. we are a unique group. Yep. Now, I, again, I told you my father's lineage. I technically would be half West Indian, right? I was raised more so around my mother's people, and I identify with ADOSness because, I mean, I, I grew up in Texas, you know. I mean, I, I speak Spanish. I can't begin to tell you how many times I have had, to, and I put this in the chat, how many times I've had to dime people out because, you know, people would just assume that, oh, you know, there's a black guy, he doesn't, you know, know what, he doesn't speak Spanish or whatever. And then I have to turn around and say, like, you know, excuse me, I can understand you or respond to them saying something back, you know. Ooh. But that happens. I've encountered discrimination not only from, you know, white people, but also from Hispanic people. Oh, no. And, okay, you know, of course, I'm with the Breaking Brown family. We never speak in absolute. No. But at the same time, you can't deny that that is something that happens. There's prejudice there. If we were all the same, y'all would not have that level of prejudice against our community. I want to share a story that happened to me recently when I was in graduate school. Quickly, fam. Quickly, a friend of mine who was Mexican. Okay, I'm. I'm sorry. I know I'm no, taking a long time. Right. A friend of mine who was Mexican American. His 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 parents are my grandparents' age, and he tried to tell me black people, Hispanic people, they're the same. I said, no, we're not. They're not the same. We have similarities but we have very different struggles. He said no, because my dad in the 50s went to a school with white kids and you know they, they taunted him and bullied him and harassed him because his skin was darker. I said, yeah, but think about this. In the 50s, your dad was able to go to school with white kids. My grandparents couldn't. Had my grandmother parents tried to enroll her in a school there, they would have said no. She has to go to the school on the other side of town. That yep. said, like you said before, Having similarities does not, does not amount to us being the same. Similarity and is so not sameness. Say it again. Similarity is not sameness. I've said that. Similarity is not sameness. People made fun of me. Yeah, they made fun of you time. in a white school. That's not our life. You didn't build the country either. That's, That's not, not our life. life. No. No. And, 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 and it's so important right now that we hold on to that. Because, you know, I had to, I had to tell a lot of people kind of cut me off with this recent election. Because I had to tell people, listen... And no, no one's denying Kamala Harris's blackness, but the truth is, her parents came here in the early '60s and went to Berkeley. My grandparents in the early '60s, I'm sure they probably had heard of Berkeley, but they never would have even thought of going there because guess what? They were college. My grandparents were college students at HBCUs in the South because that's where Negroes went. You see what I'm saying? If they got to go to school, most of us still don't get to go to school. Many of us still don't. Only twenty percent of blacks even have college degrees, yep. and you, you disaggregate blackness. But, but you know, you know what I, you know what I like to say, it. fam. I like so, to say that I like to say that Kamala Harris's daddy and mom. But I say daddy because her daddy is the, the through which she has her blackness. He was getting his PhD. Right. He was getting his PhD while Dr. King was getting sprayed with a water hose. How y'all figure that them two is the same? That's right. Come on now. You can't, you can't, you can't. And, you know, it's interesting because my uncle told me that he remembers in the early 70s after he, it's the last thing I'm going to tell, when they had started integrating schools, he had a friend who was African. His African friend told him that the administrators at the school told him, when you're on campus so that you'll have a good experience, always wear your garbs. My uncle asked him, why would they tell you that? 
his friend said the people told him that I needed to he needed to wear his garbs so that the white students, if they wanted to harass him, they would know he was not a Negro. What you mean? You mean his you mean his and African clothes. He had to wear his African clothes to differentiate himself. Is that what you're saying? To differentiate himself. They said wear your African garb because, you know, things had just started integrating and they said if you wear your African garb, people will know you're not a Negro. And so they won't treat you the way they treat Negroes. My uncle told me that. Mm, mm, mm. So mm. I'll end on that note, Thank but you, I just fam. wanted to share my experiences Ooh. because they validate everything you said tonight. Thank you, fam. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It go. You know what it is? Let me tell everybody else. Thank you, fam, for calling in. I feel that was a great call. It's like that. Remember that y'all remember they tried to the BBC right to try to write that thing about the African drummer and how he was some kind of civil rights activist. Y'all don't stop it. But you remember how they said he got on the bus and he could get on the bus because he was African, the African drummer, the civil rights drummer that we never heard of before the BBC decided to write about him and tried to make him into a civil rights hero. Go look up the the whatever 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 place he was from drumming his drum. Go look it up. He was able to ride the bus as an African, but we as ADOS, we're not. We are not the same with nobody. Oh, appreciate your specialness. Let me go to the next call, 484, 484. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello, my, my name is uh, Nat Turner. And uh, I, I, I want to mention something. I, I called him a, a couple months ago and I said something. It, you got to understand that uh, everybody, ADOS got to understand that it's going to be a lot of sellouts and all that because the p people that are going against us are very well funded. Okay. Just like the slave owners are very well funded. So you, you're going to have some people taking the money. You're going to have some people uh, selling you out because like like uh, Black Lives Matter, they got what, what $10 billion that, and a non-profit. So that's not a that's not a charity. That's a that's a corporation. That's a grift. So when when, when yeah, because I said before, I mean, you know, it's gonna be a time where you go to the store, and and you, you look at the shelves, there won't be no spray can there, cause all the white people are clear, they gonna put that spray can on to get some of that money, cause it's gonna be a gold rush, because the, the, these things you got the African countries coming over here calling us brothers and sisters. We got to get rid of that name African on our title. They call us brothers and sisters just to get the money. Um, you got all people, got all kinds of scams, all kinds of schemes just waiting, you know, to catch us because that's a lot of money going to be thrown around. People rob banks and risk their life robbing a bank for 15, 20,000. So what you, you get on, you, uh, what's going to happen with these reparations? So you're going to have people like Dr. Daddy, I mean, you're going to have people like that selling out. Don't be surprised because they are, our are, are, are enemies are well funded, well funded. And and they do a change it into a, a, all the good the reason why they're getting paid off to change it to we and people of color because if those people want to want some of the pie, they want some of the pie. So those groups have a, a interest to be part of that because there's a lot of money in the suffering of black people. Mm -hmm. And white people, they're going to throw that money on them because they, they try to solve the problem and they feel guilt and all that. So these people going to jump in front of us and steal the pot. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, we, we, it's going to be rough because if you get closer to it, it's going to be more sellouts. It's going to be more money offered to sell people and turn their, their things like, you know, it's going to be that way. Yeah. Just, as, just as the way it is. You got to just understand that, you know, it's like going to be like a gold rush. Like mm. I said, when you go get a reparations, so. and you'll be surprised you're in line. I think you know so. what I'm saying? I think you'll it's going to be a gold rush too. For you. Yeah, I think it's going to be a gold rush. And I think it's going to be a gold rush to strip our money away from us once we get it too. Not just to get it, but to strip yeah. it away from the from the people who got it. And yep. I think we haven't because we Listen, keep by have, any means necessary. Yeah, because we keep by having to play means, with. If you got to steal, if you got to lie, if you got to cheat, we gonna get all that because that's all we got while we've been here. Exactly. And people forget that. Exactly. A lot of people know they lie. A lot of people know that, but it don't matter. They want that check. Yep. It's called they're a con. Get it. They're gonna try to all get right, it back. All right. Thank you. Thank you, fam. And I, I, because I, I think that's the first okay. thing that's going to happen. I don't, and I think that because we keep, you know, we every it seems like every 
every seven, eight months, maybe every year, we keep having to play with knuckleheads all the time. And it's just like, we got to get out of the knucklehead lane and into the serious lane. But the knuckleheads keep keep coming. We got to get out of the knucklehead lane, right? Because we have a we have an actual opponent that we want to fight. Listen, don't keep throwing your toddler body into the road or whatever. We have, we have an actual opponent. And if we defeat that opponent, and we can, then we get the thing that we need to not only survive and be elevated. We got to get the peanut gallery out of the way. We don't have time for the peanut gallery. We got real stuff to do. We got real grown folks business. And he's right. Once we get reparations, even when we get close to it, these people going to get vicious. And it's not just going to be white people. It's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole people of color brigade that's going to get real vicious with us. And we got to have a way to deal with that when it happens. And we ain't got time to deal with goofballs. Um, I'm going to 720. 720, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, Yvette, this is Sharita calling from Denver, Colorado. Hey, Sharita. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. I sure can. I'm so excited. I've been listening and wanting to get in. Okay. So quickly, I wanted to chime in <laughs> because I um, I actually work for a foundation and we do a lot of what we call racial equity work. Okay. Um, and it's interesting that you brought up this particular topic because one of the... Um, we did a lot of work for the last five years with a uh, foundation that funded us to do some work. And it was like, it boiled down to 17 different organizations that were all working together, um, basically to to figure out how to um, address these different issues, looking at it through a racial justice lens. Okay. And what was interesting was, as we go all over, all, you know, all of these different places all over Colorado, Montrose, you go to Steamboat. And the one thing that I saw was, Colorado is very much so a, a very it's it, it, it's 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 a language barrier, right? It was like everywhere it was white people, or it was Hispanics, and the issue was things not being translated, or them not having affordable housing. But they're living they're they're they work for resorts where everybody has money, so it's like either you work for them or you drive to get in. But there was no issues that I saw with people actually being able to deal with one another. It was language. It was never a problem with we don't want to live around them or we have an issue with them going to the schools. It was literally, well, we never really thought about, you know, we would have to change things and they would actually want stuff in their language when they came to the bank. So I say all that to say what's very interesting is people have no problems with assimilating and everybody falling in line. And I said, the only time that we all have a conversation about people of color is when we're sitting in these rooms and these convenings and there's some grant money attached to it. Other than that, when people go back in places, nobody looks at it like that. Nobody cross collaborates and, and says, oh, this works for us. Let me see if you work for you. They get money in their foundations. And I'm like, I find that really interesting that everybody clamps on to this people of color, like you all have been saying, when it comes down to some money. But at any other time, there's no type of association. Uh, oh, that's the shoehorn, though. That's the shoehorn game. It's just when, we, when there's some money to be gotten, people talking about diversity, we want to shoehorn in. We're people of color, too. We're just like ADOS. We're here. It's either we here and we people mm -hmm. of color. We here and we queer. We here and we whatever. But then when you get that money, you break all the way back off. You break back off. And I said I and I specifically put this in the last report when we closed out the work with them. And I said I feel like there was huge opportunities that were missed because even if you were looking at a racial it through a racial justice lens and everything which it did boiled down to immigration reform. I said, you didn't even hit on the fact that there's so much discrimination even within that because there wasn't one African, mind you, again, I said, it came down from 32 organizations down to boil down to 17 that went through this five years of work. Out of 17 organizations, you didn't have one Caribbean organization, one African organization, none of that. It said, how do you, if you, even if it boils down to immigration, how do you not make it a requirement that all of these organizations that already have some know-how and have these functioning foundations and have funding, 
work with other organizations that work with immigrants to bring them along. As far as black organizations are concerned, they didn't even do that. And so I said, I think it's still very interesting the way that we even have these conversations because they don't demand it even in that space. It's, it, it all boiled down to the Hispanic population, although we were seeing huge amounts of Haitians being, uh, you know, sent. We were seeing large amounts of Africans being blocked from even coming in. And hey, so I just, I, I, I'll be in on the, I'm fam. sorry. No, let me say this. Like, black immigrants don't understand that the only reason that you're allowed to be here and the only thing that keeps you here is like ADOS, ADOS is cool with you. ADOS has been cool with you, right? It's not because these other immigrant groups are cool with you. They not, they ain't. They're not. And you have decided to go and align yourselves with them. And that was a great that exactly. was a, that, that was a great um tweet the other day about how many um immigrant uh black planes taking black immigrants from the Caribbean, Africa, everywhere back home during the Biden administration. No, y'all was talking about kids in cages and you thought you thought that that applied to you, black immigrants it don't. Like, you have to understand, it like, doesn't. you're here at the behest of ADOS. And instead, you're opposing ADOS and saying, oh, y'all are being discriminatory. You want, you just, all you want is your own reparations. Yeah, of course we do. But understand what you're risking in terms of opposing us. Because them people ain't playing with you. They act like they do, and they get in your face, and they say, oh, we're all immigrants together. They don't care about you. And that's what she's saying. That's what you're saying. No. Like, you're not in a part of that. Absolutely. And the whole thing about it is, you said something very key that this is a worldwide phenomena don't get it twisted people don't come here and learn the concepts of racism they learn the they learn the function within it and how it benefits them here in america but this is a worldwide phenomena and i always tell people don't let all of this conversation and what folks are telling you fool you and think that you are with them every everybody benefited across the globe from the position that we were put in as ADOS. I said, and, and, and I don't take anything from anybody, mm -hmm. as you all say, as far as our black immigrants from anywhere. We know that there were contributions made everywhere. But when we think about the types of creations, whether it was music, inventions, anything that, that forged progress across the globe, we were instrumental in that. And so at the end of the day, you have to realize that everybody benefits from us continuing to be oppressed across the globe. And that's why I do not get involved in those conversations when it comes to people of color, because I know that that is all a game. I say, oh, you can't eat gold. You can't, all you, you, there's a lot of things that when gold initially was discovered, you could, we weren't even utilizing it for in terms of technology and things. So you're not going to make me believe that people rushed here for no gold. You didn't even have a way to get to it yet. Uh, we were the gold. Oh, we were the gold. And so I'm going to talk about that, that. Right? We were the gold. We still are. Yes, we still are. We have still yet to lose our value. And that's why we're still dying. Because we don't realize that our organs, our, our being here is instrumental to everybody else's outcomes. And that is, we have to realize that all of this is to keep us disillusioned, to keep us all confused about what's really going on. And I'm just saying that there's a lot of money floating around out here. And, and as the man just stated before of my call, you know, people are really excited about being able to jump out right now at all of these checks and stuff. But the work, watch, watch who's actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. Watch who's actually doing the work. Because I'm working for foundations. I'm working for places now. And we're still getting pennies. we getting what we call the least little commodity funds, 10000 25000 That's discretionary funds that these people can give you at will. They don't really have to get no approval. They don't have to do nothing. But you got these, you got, you got, you got these Hispanic foundations, and and, and within one month, they can, a couple of months, they raised one point five million dollars. They given out fifty thousand uh, dollar um, grants at one time, and and we, they are struggling with four, three or four different foundations put together, a million dollars for the black organizations, all the murders, all the killings, 
and, and you mean to tell me we can't put together a million dollars in Colorado? Now, you know what marijuana is legal in Colorado? I'm just telling y'all, be careful with that people of color stuff mm. because everybody, it's not they're going to benefit. They are benefiting. Ooh. The money's getting handed out right now. Fam. <laughs> it's getting handed out right now. Fam, so I, I've you. heard this. I've heard this a few times. That's how I know you ain't lying. You're right. I heard this a few times. Listen, that people of color money is going. And I don't think people understand. The huh? reason it's going is because you get to Sam, you get to stand beside the beacon of liberation around the world. ADOS, ADOS is the beacon around the world of liberation, the freedom struggle. Yep. You, you pull us close and say, we all the same, we all together, we people of color. And you, you get warm because we hot, right? And so you get That's the right. money because we don't say, hold on. You hold on, you're too close. Like, let us do this. This is our thing. That's your thing. You got to go build your thing. We say, yes, we rainbow coalitioning together. We people of color together. And so they get to say, see, we together. And so, listen, white people know the con too. People of color with money know the con too. They know we're not. But they know, hey, I'm going to give money to white people who are brown because people have accepted them as ADOS. It's a whole con. And we keep That's falling right. for it. We keep falling for it. It's a whole con. It's a whole con. I'm telling you, it's it's big money out here. And I just I just want to tell you just one more thing. Because of you guys, you at home, I swear, I, when I put that report together, I said the reason you all were able to work your way around really examining things through that race justice as you talked about was because you all do not have the majority of the organizations that you all had a part of this do not work with people who were descendant, uh, black descendants of slavery. They did not go through the black code era. They did not go through Jim Crow. They did not move through the civil rights era. They did not move through the crack era. <laughs> they did not move through the destruction that we did. And so the, 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 the plight that they have is totally different. And I said, there's, well, if what you, you do not deal with the least of us, there is no way for you to dress anybody in between because as we learned in undoing racism, this is on a spectrum. Mm. So if you, if, 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 if you think that coming in here as a brown person, you're not going to dis experience some discrimination, that's just, that's on the, the spectrum. But what you're not doing is falling to this bottomless pit because you were tethered to the bottom, as you all told us. Is the 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 the, the 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 part that we suffer from from being eight off? Exactly. Tether and, to the bottom. Exactly. And 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 what you what you what you really saying when you say understand what she's saying, fam? When she said they didn't live through slavery, they didn't live through Jim Crow, they didn't live through Reconstruction, they didn't live, they're saying that she's saying that they didn't bear the cost. They didn't bear the cost, but they're eating the fruit. Listen, if you plant if Come you on. plant a lemon tree. You're supposed to eat lemons. If, if you plant an apple tree, you're supposed to eat apples. What's happened is that we have planted all kinds of trees. If you plant vegetables or if you plant all strawberries or whatever you grow, you're supposed to eat that. What's happened is that we have planted a thing and we have, we have, we have, we have actually paid the cost and we have not been able to bear the fruit and eat the fruit of that. Other people have come and said, I look like this person, so this is my fruit too. And we have allowed that to happen. That's right. And that's the problem. And we We've have to put it, it into we got to, we got to, we got to push back. I, I want to just tell you, I, I made, we, we, we made an award after it, it's actually, we put, it, it's paid off because we specifically did that. It's, it's for the MLK commission. Um, it's one of our new awards, um, that we created. And the reason that we did that was because I explained that, um, to our chair, and, and he actually went online and, and looked you all up and I explained exactly what ADOS stood for and, and what, what you all are creating and have created. And, and, I, and he put black on there for one specific reason. The B is on there for one specific reason. I said I wanted for people to, over the time as this award goes on, to not get swept up in the notion of American descendants of slavery being able to be anybody like we've gotten swept up in African-Americans being able mm. to be white people as well, right? 
because that has happened. And I realize we want to we want to move away from the notion of black. But within this particular award, I didn't want the idea of it being black American descendants of slavery because I didn't want anybody to think, oh, I come from slavery because my people were slave owners. Mm. I, too, can take part and I just didn't want the confusion to come in as we're maybe no longer a part of the organization at some point in our lives. And so I just wanted to let you know that we are here in Thank Denver, Colorado, paying our homage to American descendants of slavery. Thank to you. Appreciate Yvette it. Yvette Cornell and oh, Tone Cox, you, and we appreciate you. Thank you, fam. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. And I thank you for I thank you for illuminating everybody on what it looks like inside of the, the foundation world and the organizational world and all of that. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, fam. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I think you know, I say this all the time, but you know, ADOS is the sleeping giant. Like, right? Like we don't really understand what we represent not only in America but to the entire world. And we don't really understand the specialness of this. And other groups who do understand it seem to be descendants of slavery themselves and have some kind of connection to that. But we don't understand that. We just, you got to get this, this people of color, Crayola, brown stuff out of your mind. It makes no sense. So I'm going right now to 915. 915, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Yes, my name is Ansar, ma'am. How and you doing? And my question is, hello, ma'am? No, I said, how are you doing? Yes, uh, my question is, um, what is your opinion on the stimulus check being a um, a test run to see how we were, we would react to a reparations? Thank you, fam. I appreciate you calling in. I don't think the stimulus has anything to do with reparations or... I don't think it's any kind of test run. It's a stimulus. I'm going to my next caller. I'm going to 818-818. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, Yvette. This is, uh, I'll go by Trinidad. My family's in the West Indies. Hey, what's going on with you? Hey, what's going on? I've been watching you since the days of Army. Just want to <laughs> give you your flowers now. You and Tone. <laughs> I appreciate your work. I've been educating my family for the longest time on the work on the ADOS and they are in full support. You lot got allies out there. Why don't you know, know you got allies? Y'all be rocking. We, you, but you Trinidad. You say Trinidad, right? Trinidad, correct, uh, yeah. correct. We got, we got you a lot know, of, we got I, lot I of Caribbean allies. I wanted to say real allies. quick, in regards to tonight's topic, mm -hmm. you know, I think that the hardest thing for, for your, particularly for your allies, we, we watch ADOS. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't know, like, we quietly watch you. You lot are, are, are far more powerful than, than most of you realize, and we watch you. And what hurts is to see your own people fighting against you. And, and what hurts even more is to see someone as prestigious as Dr. Darity with his doctor degree, 30 years of study and reparations, to now turn around and say, or well, crack that door open to say that Adolf's claim should be expanded to, 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 to other, others as well. You know, my um my family like i said we recognize ados the, the other i'm gonna say this real quick this, this, and this all ties in mm -hmm. so my mother the other day was watching there's a a show on netflix called the trial of the chicago seven okay the trial of the chicago seven and um if anyone doesn't know about it i'm not going to get into all of here but you can go look it up on netflix suffice it to say that when she watched it she was so shook and she said to me, she's like, you know, I can't, I just, I can't identify. She said, I can't identify what, what, what Adolf people have been through. She's like, I, I, they have been through things that we've never experienced in Trinidad. Now, that's not to say that the Caribbean didn't yeah. have slavery. We're not saying that. No. It's not saying they didn't go through that. Exactly. Right? But the things that you've had to go through here, I told my mother, I said, you have to understand that our family got here in 1967, I believe, right around when immigration laws changed I told my family you have to realize we were able to leapfrog over ADOS mm -hmm. of many things we didn't have to experience things we didn't have to go through the failure of reconstruction convict leasing sundown towns sitting at the back of the bus redlining crack epidemic mass incarceration that's not to say some West Indians didn't get touched by that but the majority of us didn't have to it, 2020, I think whenever that movie The Green Mile came out, my mother didn't even know what sundown towns were. Never had to experience that. 
So, uh, you know, I say all this to say that, you know, you have allies out there. We support you. Thank you, fam. Um, my, oh, the last thing, my mother, oh. when she mentioned all this, you know, I told her, I said, you know, as allies, you know, we have to, to support reparations. Mm. And I said, there are some people out there, there are other immigrants out there who say that, you know, they're upset because they feel that they should get some of that, that, that money as well. And my mother had said, she said, like, no, that does, that's not right. ADOS, they have their own separate claim. That's theirs. They, we, we as Caribbeans have no rights that we should go to the Caribbean for our reparations. Right? So, again, I, I wrap it up to say that you have support. You have allies. I'm upset to see the turn that um, Dr. Sandy is uh, taken. I'm sorry, Dr. Darity is taken. I do think that, you know, as, you know, um, ADOS HQ begins to form and the chapters form, I think you had mentioned early in regards to having like a media arm yes. that, that is able to put out specific information. I, I can't wait for that to happen. Oh, me. As an ally, yeah. I would love to be a part of being able to push okay. back in the right way and, and in, in, a, in a concise, intelligent, rational, logical, reasonable way to make the case point for ADOS. I just want to thank you. No, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, fam. I want to thank you, fam. And I just want to say, you know, while you're on the line, that I appreciate you being an ally, right? You know, you know, one of the things that doesn't go unsaid is that, like, you know, we talked about Darity, you know, in terms of his pivot, but he's Ados, and you can see as an ally that that pivot doesn't benefit Ados. So I think sometimes we have to recognize and realize that 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 allies have 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 uh, have that we have allies. Number one. And they they make very real contributions to what we're doing, right? And we have to think. Sometimes we think, oh, the only people we we can let allies and allies are gonna sell us out. Nah, you gotta look at a lot of people who are already selling us out who are ADOS. You judge people by how they adhere to a specific agenda. That's how you judge a person. Are you on this agenda path with us? That's how we determine who is an ally. Right. So shout out right. to you. And let, let me also say let me also say this. You know, I, I do sometimes hear people push back in regards to saying, oh, we don't need allies. You you do. I'm going to tell you this, uh, Yvette. Yep. Because I look ADOS, mm -hmm. but come from a Caribbean background, there are times when I'm able to step in rooms and have conversations with other European American, Caucasian folk, or non ADOS people to defend your claim. Mm. And, and they're more they're more willing to hear it because I'm not ADOS. See? So sometimes I, I can actually get in those rooms and have those conversations because they don't feel they don't feel hesitant or afraid or like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Or like you got a you chip on your shoulder. Him. Or like you got a chip on your shoulder because it's not your claim, right? Correct. So they don't feel like, oh, here he go. He wants something free. No, I'm not going to get it. But I'm still Correct. telling you that it's their right to get it. And that is the benefit. And I think we have to get into a mode to understanding, yes, you do need... You do need, we do need allies, and there are benefits to having allies to go into spaces, even to homes. Even the fact that you allow, you are able to have this conversation with your mom is a benefit of having an ally. Because there are some people who just will not do it, or they're not an ally or whatever, because you have to talk to the people around you. Like, you have to be able to influence the people in your specific orbit. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. And, I, and I'll say this, I'll wrap it up with this. Yeah, I, I am baffled. I'm baffled as to why Dr. Darity would make such a pivot to now even think about opening up the, up the doors. You, you, he, this is a, a this is a brilliant man. This is a scholar and an academic. He must realize that this is a losing battle. Once you do that, I, that's you open up the door for everybody. Yep. Everybody can hop in that. So, and how are you? How are you going to get that past the U.S. Congress? This, this is a fight. This. It's a justice claim that ADOS has against the United States government. It is their individual claim that they have against the government. You don't open that up. How now all of a sudden you open this up to any, I don't want to say Tom, Dick, and Harry, but any, really, yeah. just anybody who has some type of, you know, um, uh, injustice that the United States government has done. It doesn't make any sense. This is a losing position. I don't know why he would do that. I just... It's so disappointing. Yeah. I don't know why. But again, you have allies. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I appreciate and, you. Um, 
I appreciate you. Keep up with the good fight. I appreciate you. Tell your mom I said hey. I, pre- I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so, <laughs> Thank <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, and I, and, you know, it's just, it's just, I think we're going to end it. I think that's a good call to end that family. So if you all didn't get through, I apologize. I think this is a good call to end on. You know, I think, you know, I, I, you know, I have to say I'm disappointed as well. You know, it's, this is not the time to open, to, to kind of, to kind of fling that door open. Like we have all, I don't think we all understand how disrespectful it is. We have all operated under a certain under, understanding in terms of reparations for years. Like you don't get to kind of unilaterally go out on a national platform and throw up some kind of trial balloon because that impacts us all. You open the door for everybody. And we have an ally saying, yeah, I understand why this is absolutely a problem. Um, But this ADOS professor did not understand that. That's why you can't just marginalize allies and no, 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 you just, we just don't need no, yeah, you do, you do. But he just said, we can get in the rooms. You do, you absolutely do, right? I so it's 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 and you can't assume a certain thing of a person because they're ADOS and you can't assume a certain thing of an ally because they're an ally. You can't do that. You know, I was kinda looking at the chat when the other person called in and the other person mentioned I'm from the West Indies. Oh, you're not ADOS, blah blah blah. That can't be the barometer. We ask who you to get the context of your life, not to just decide that we're gonna discriminate against you and not listen to what you have to say because we understand what the needs are and we understand like listen, why wouldn't you want a good ally? Like, why wouldn't you want that? What would prohibit you from wanting somebody who can help with what we want to do and who is on the same page? I help you, you help me, we help each other. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So, fam, I want to leave it there. I thought we had some good calls tonight, which was wonderful. I appreciated the calls we had tonight. Um, Foundation calls, ally calls, it was all wonderful. Uh, So please, fam, before you go, please hit that like button. Please share. If you want to donate, go to donatebrown.com. Uh, dollar sign breaking brown for cash app patreon.com slash why carnell um if you want to do that but please hit that like button please hit that bell for me hit that like button before you leave hit that bell right so that you get notifications if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel i would appreciate that and we're going to leave it there remember ben and jerry sweet ice cream is not your reparations and it's never going to be that and remember anybody who brags about bringing this this corporation on uh, and or, or them bringing them on and say well we got the bins and the jerry's it's not your reparation either and we are not the same we all have a, a difference about us and we are ADOS have a specific justice claim in this country and nobody takes it away from us and we're going to have to start sending letters to editors all that kind of stuff thoughtful stuff to make sure um that 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 our justice claim is protected so everybody stay tuned we got a lot of good stuff coming up um uh, uh be easy breezy finish your libation don't 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 wake up to no libation finish your libation before you go to sleep um and i will see you all next time keep it easy breezy